Hey folks, this is Eric Warren with Tannoy. We've put together a series of short videos to inform the project or home studio owners out there on how best to choose and use near-field studio monitors. We're going to be talking about near-field monitors specifically. These are monitors that are designed to be placed a meter or two from your listing position. That's three to five feet for you Americans, those in Liberia or Myanmar. As these speakers are placed close to the listing position, you're really just hearing the sounds directly from the speakers, not what is bouncing off the walls and other surfaces in the room. That being said, you can't cheat physics, and your room is going to have an impact on what you hear, and we'll give you some tips on how to minimize those in a later episode. Okay, you've decided to buy some monitors. Good for you. It's a big step in getting better results in the studio. While it's always good to use other references like headphones or a car or home stereo as a sort of second opinion, a set of studio monitors you can trust to translate the mixing and recording decisions you make is one of the most important parts of the recording chain. Looks like a daunting task with so many options out there in studio monitors, but choosing a monitor that suits your needs and budget doesn't have to be difficult. A bit of knowledge about the various features monitors have can make the decision much easier, and even further, ensuring you are setting up and using those monitors properly will allow you to get the most out of what you purchase. Studio monitors are designed for a different purpose than home stereos or other systems meant for music listening. That purpose is accuracy. A flat frequency response across the audible spectrum at all volumes, without the monitor changing the sound you have recorded. These videos are going to focus on the most common near-field monitors available out there for the home or project studio, active two-way monitors. The active part refers to the amplifier and crossover network being self-contained in the speaker enclosure itself and two-way is for the two separate drivers to handle different parts of the frequency spectrum, more commonly referred to as the woofer and tweeter. We'll be using the Tannoy Reveal series of monitors to demonstrate some of the features and principles we come across, not only because they sound fantastic and are available at excellent prices, but also because they're my employer and they gave me this great t-shirt. Here are some things to consider when looking at studio monitors. Make sure you choose ones that are the right size for your application, not just for the type of music or audio that you are working on, but also the size of the room and distance from the mix or listening position. Electronic music or hip hop tends to be more bass heavy, and you might want larger monitors that extend further down in frequency for these types of music. But if you're in a small spare bedroom, it might not be necessary or practical to use larger monitors. Another thing to consider is placement. Will the speakers be placed against a wall? This is where you'll want to think about front-ported monitors to prevent the bass buildup that happens when rear-ported monitors are close to a wall or other surface. And another thing to consider is the source. Are you using a laptop or tablet as the sound source or an actual dedicated interface? This might determine the type of input you'll require on the monitor. Most laptops or tablets have an unbalanced eighth inch output, whereas an interface would typically be balanced quarter inch or XLR. Okay, that's all for now. In the next episode, we'll focus on setting up your monitors properly. You can go straight to that episode by clicking on this handsome fellow right here. If you wish to leave comments via Facebook or Twitter, we put those links in the video description as well. See you next time.